you want to have fun in a 3D software and you want to make a planet, an orange, a balloon. So head over to menu, add sphere. And what's that? That's not a sphere. Apparently you can create a true curved surface. So you need a solid with the good topology that approximate a sphere, but it's not actually a sphere. So let's explore some of them. Rolling draw. One of the most popular is the radial sphere or UV sphere that works using basic polar coordinates. From the bottom you create a point, then a circle, then a bigger circle and continue until you reach the North Pole. Then you slap some faces on it and you're done. It's pretty common because it's easy to understand and visualize and it's quite easy to open and transform in a flat plane. However, it's not always a good topology because near the pole there is a higher concentration of vertices than near the equator. So the mesh has fewer details near the center. Also, faces have a different shape and size, and you are mixing together triangles and quadrilaterals, which is uh, quite terrifying. The resolution is controlled by changing the number of parallels and meridians of the topology, so you always need to remember to change both of them, which can be a bit frustrating. Next is the spherified cube, which is a cube that is spherified. Basically, you subdivide your cube a few times, then take each vertex and normalize it, which means projecting it on the ideal sphere. Again, this is another topology that is quite easy to understand and modify, but not really regular. Near the corners, the vertices are closer together than near the center of the faces. Also, all vertices have four neighbors, except for the corners that have only three, and that can cause a lot of problems. If you want a regular topology, then the Rikosahedon is the best. It's a solid with 20 identical triangular faces, so all vertices are equidistant from each other. It works amazing for all kinds of applications where you need a constant vertex density on the entire surface, but it is more complex to work with. Also, to increase the resolution, you can take each face, create a vertex in the middle of each edge, use them to create 4 new faces, and then normalize them. This means that at each subdivision the number of vertices grows exponentially, and you might not have the exact resolution you want. To be honest, at this point my mom told me to stop playing with fake balls and go outside and play with a real one. So that's what I did. I present to you the truncated icosahedron, which is the popular shape of the football or soccer ball. It is based on icosahedron where you cut off the 12 corners and replace them with a pentagonal face. If you truncate an already subdivided icosahedron, you can get a quite beautiful topology with mostly hexagon. However, it has the complexity and exponential growth of the icosahedron without its regularity and constant point density, because you are missing together pentagons and hexagon. So, you know. Yeah. Now let's move to my favorite, the Fibonacci sphere. You create it by basically placing the vertices on a spiral around the ideal sphere. And oh, it's so satisfying when animated. Look at that! <laughs> Creating the vertices is really fast and easy, and you need a very short code to do it. That's not the case for the faces though, so I chose to have a bit of fun and used the Delaunay triangulation, which is basically a way to get a relatively good face topology from a set of points. Since the library used only works on flat surfaces, I had to use a stereographic projection, which basically melts the sphere on the floor. Then the Delaunay triangulation takes one vertex at a time and starts building the faces. At the end, you can just reverse the projection and you have your shiny sphere. This still leaves a hole at the bottom, but you can easily fix it manually. It is really fast to build, you can have the exact number of vertices you need and the faces have more or less the same size. But it's not regular, especially at the poles, where it becomes uh, quite a mess. Last, we can leave without talking about the random sphere, which is a sphere where all the points are placed randomly, and the faces are generated with the Delaunay triangulation. You can build it in many different ways, but there is no doubt that uh, it is pretty ugly. The faces have really different shapes and sizes, and it's quite horrible to work with. I mean, it's just a disaster. So if you really want variations in your mesh, do yourself a favor, just use a normal topology and some noise, it's much easier. There are many other topologies or spheres, but these are the ones that I encounter the most. I wrote a Python script for an add-on that creates and animates them in Blender, and the code is in the description, together with a couple of sources I used to make the video. Well, now I'm finally going to play with my truncated Icosa hidden! Ciao!